So um, that's the situation or that's the pair of situations we're going to use, um, the pair of models we're going to use to unpack these different um, questions. So let's have a look at this example here. And this, by the way, is an example we're going to do in two halves. So we're going to have a go at it together. And then um, I'm going to set you a sort of secondary question that's going to take you, um, that you're going to do independently and we'll come back together. So um, read it with me and you don't have to write it all down. Let's just capture the important information as we go. A particle is projected upwards in a medium for which the resistance to the motion is one fifth of the mass times the velocity. Okay, that absolutely needs to be highlighted. So let's just have a look at that. Uh, this is the resistance that's being described here, right? It's one fifth of the mass times the velocity. So you can see right here, this one fifth, this is the K that we're talking about, right? So this is the constant of proportionality. I guess you could name it if you wanted to. Um, one fifth of the mass. So there's one fifth times M. And then it's multiplied by the velocity. I did say before, sometimes you're multiplied by the velocity squared. Uh, in theory, there's nothing wrong with being multiplied by velocity cubed or to the power of four. But in the context of the course, you'll really only see um, velocity or velocity squared. So I'm just going to underline that. That's equally important. So this is... Um, uh, uh, sorry, M and then K and then V and it's, it's resistance. So it's a minus sign that that's implied uh, opposite in direction. I guess we could highlight that as well, but you don't really need to say that when it's resistance. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. The initial velocity is 30 meters per second. There you go. That's important to work out. We're going to have to uh, integrate and we'll use that to um, solve for our constant of integration. Let y be its height in meters above the point of projection after t seconds. So t equals zero is our um, initial condition uh, and y will be uh, zero when it's projected upwards in a medium. You start from the bottom um, above the point of projection after all. Uh, we're setting gravity to be 10 and then they provide to us very nicely how polite of them. They actually in this case, and it makes sense because this is an initial example, they give us the acceleration equation. This is what it should be, right? Um, you may like to put just beside this, right? Where did they get this from? Well, if we were to write the forces, you're going to get, we, we, this is the upwards journey, so just going back to that table before, uh, this is this situation here, isn't it? So we've got um, G being set as 10 and uh, the mass is, is not um, defined, but we don't need the mass because if I say minus 10 M, there's the um, minus MG and then minus a fifth, there's the um, K times M V, you can see all I need to do to get from this force equation to this acceleration equation is I'm dividing through by M as according to F equals M A. All right. So we've set ourselves up uh, and you know, they've given us this equation. We can work with it. Now what their question is, well, the first part of the question is find Y as a function of the velocity V and hence find its maximum height. So that's a bit sneaky. It's kind of like a second part to this question, but it's fairly trivial. Okay, so how are we going to begin? Well, I'm going to start with this acceleration equation, um, y double dot equals this. Um, but I noticed that where I'm trying to go to is um, y as a function of v, right? So if I've got acceleration here, I'm going to need to do some kind of integration. So as we've seen before, I need to choose a form for acceleration that's going to be most helpful to get me towards um, y as a function of v, right? So if, for example, I wrote down uh, y double dot, and I'm going to put this together on, on as one fraction. So if I put, say, for example, this is going to be 50 on 5 plus v on 5. I'm trying to get my common denominator here. Um, which form is going to be most helpful? Post it in the chat. I'll give you a second, just like we did on Tuesday. Which form of acceleration do you think will be most useful um, to you know, get us on the path to integration. Okay, Sham's in early, very good, but with some question marks. Um, and I think I, I know why. You're like, mm, is that what it is? Uh, does anyone else want to weigh in? What do you guys think? Okay, we can uh, have a go with the, yep, yeah, all right. I'm, I'm liking that we've got Y's in here because we've got vertical resisted motion rather than horizontal. So you know, have a think about this, right? Which is the best candidate? Now, um, you can go through any way that you like. Um, whether it's going to be the most efficient path for you is another question. Um, I'm going to throw in a vote for Shams and let's see what happens, right? If I go V 
DV on DY. We are used to writing V DV on DX, but this is vertical motion. Um, what am I going to get? Well, let's have a look at the right hand side. I've got that minus sign there and I got everything on denominator of five so I could combine this together. So I'm going to get 50 plus V. That's all divided by five. Now, why is this helpful? I want you to anticipate where we're going to go next. I like this because I've got um, y's appearing, you can see this dy here, if I start to integrate that, that'll give me a y equals something or other. And then I've also got, everything else is in terms of v's, right? There's a v, there's a dv, there's another v over there. So I've got the two pieces that I want, right? I've got my y, I've got my v, and after I integrate, I'm just going to need to um, find out my constant of integration and then, uh, you know, do some algebraic manipulation to make y the subject. So this is promising. Let's see what happens when we uh, try and twist and turn this. I'm going to do my separation of variables step here. So I'm um, noticing that I've got, let's highlight it just up here, these v terms over on the right hand side, um, I want to divide through by those. So that gives me v on 50 plus V. Um, I'm ha happy to leave that DV over there on the left hand side with the V's where it belongs and I'm going to multiply that DY over to the other side. So that gives you minus 1 over 5 DY. So this is promising. What do I do with this? Um, I know how to integrate the right hand side, that's no problem. Uh, the left hand side, that looks a little more awkward. So you're going to need to think back to um, some of your further integration skills. Though honestly, you don't need to be an extension 2 student to see how to manipulate this thing on the left hand side. Have a think. Um, it doesn't look like it's like in an F dash on F situation, um, but it wouldn't be hard to modify it so that it was, right? Uh, here's what I'm going to do on the left hand side. Uh, I'm going to say if, if I wanted to have um, an F dash on F situation, right? Uh, the F in this case is 50 plus V. So the F dash would be one in this case. So if I had one on the top or any integer, not integer, any constant uh, multiple of one, um, a constant coefficient in front of the one, then I'd be good, right? It'd be an F dash on F situation. So in order to do that, I'm going to pull a trick we've done before, um, dealing with uh, integrals with rational integrands. Um, I'm going to manipulate this numerator in just a teeny tiny way. Um, by putting a 50 up the top there, you can't just add 50 because you want to. Um, you're going to have to subtract 50 to keep it all balanced. And all of that is still on the same denominator, 50 plus V. And then there's a DV over there. Now, hopefully you're convinced that uh, nothing has changed on the left hand side. Uh, but this is better to work with, right? Because you can see here that this 50 plus V on 50 plus V that I can separate out as its own fraction. That'll just be one. Um, and then you can say, all right, this uh, minus 50 on 50 plus V, um, that is the F dash on F situation that I was looking for. Just there's an extra factor of minus 50. So this I can deal with. Let's have a go. I'm going to separate that 50 plus V on 50 plus V as one. Um, then I'm going to say minus 50 lots of, um, and then I've got um, one on 50 plus V there. And all of this has a DV um, attached to it. And I'm just going to move, I'm running out of space over on the left hand side here. It's just sort of ballooning out. So let's actually move it over. Sorry, I'm cheating. I know you can't do that. Uh, let's move that over. Um, so I have a bit more room to breathe. Okay. And uh, nothing has changed on the right hand side. So I'm just going to pop that down. All right, um, at this point, I am ready to integrate. So in fact, I, I'm so lazy that I'm, I don't even need to write a whole new line that just has the integral on both sides. So I'll just highlight that in a different color just so you can see it's a whole different step there. Uh, let's go ahead and let's integrate, right? So I'm getting V on the left-hand side minus 50 uh, log of 50 plus V equals. Uh, what do I get on the right hand side? This is minus 1 over 5 uh, y plus my constant. Okay, does that look all right to you? Um, I need to find out what this constant is equal to. So I'm just going to pause for a minute and I'm going to let you do the substitution according to, if I just zoom out so you can see uh, this situation here. Um, can you work out what all of that is going to be equal to if you work out what your constant is? Let me pause and once you get that into your, um, uh, into your own question, you can pop it in the chat. Just let me 
pause and see if you can catch up to me.